open FYI. I meet the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, to find out more about his new free school meals plan. Blast off. Meet the two scouts who got to see a SpaceX rocket launch in their report for FYI. Hello, this is FYI, the weekly news show where we bring you all the latest info and all the big stories. Coming up, we'll be marking World Book Day by chatting to author and illustrator of the Tom Gates books, Liz Pichon. But first, one of the big issues we know you really care about. Yeah, free school meals are a lifeline for millions of families across the UK, struggling with the rising cost of food. Just over two million pupils get a free lunch to help parents who are struggling. But unfortunately, not everyone qualifies for free school meals, which means thousands of children who really need them are still missing out. Recently, we spoke to the Education Secretary, Gillian Keegan, and asked if the government was going to do more to make sure that no one goes hungry. What you're trying to do is make sure it gets to the most disadvantaged people. And then the other thing that we put in was free school meals for all infants. And now we've just put in uh, breakfasts in those areas that are more deprived. Well, recently, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, announced that from September, all primary school children will be given a free school meal. Pretty cool, right? Well, I got to meet Mr Khan to find out more. Having enough money to have a decent meal three times a day has been getting harder for many families for a while. It's all down to the rising cost for food. Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, has announced free school meals for all primary school children across the capital. So why have you decided to give free school meals to primary school children in London? I think it's really important. Every child uh, has at least one nutritious, hot, healthy meal a day. Unfortunately, in our great city of uh, London, uh, every day there's about 210,000 children who are in poverty, but they're not receiving a free school meal. So reception up to year six in London will receive a free school meal. I know a lot of people might be confused why you've decided to start it in September. I mean, the living crisis is affecting people now. We've got a situation where school kitchens aren't quite ready to ramp up the amount of free school meals that we would uh, need. So if we said, I want you to do it from tomorrow, it'd be chaos. So we're going to give the schools and the councils time for the start of the next academic year, which is September. But it's also the time of year when we know people's heating bills will go up. Families who aren't yet in receipt of free school meals really struggle making ends meet. What about during the holidays? I mean, the living crisis doesn't stop affecting people during the holidays. I am worried uh, about the holidays. So we're working with some great charities and we're making some announcements when it comes to the holidays later on this year. Why do you guys think free school meals are important? The cost of living crisis, as some families can't afford it, and having a warm meal would be very beneficial. If this was free, parents could relax more. Everyone should have the right to have a full meal because if your parent didn't have the time to make a, a big, nice bowl of pasta and someone else's did, it would be really unfair because someone would be going home hungry while the other person is filled. It would be like amazing to have free food. It will just change so many people's lives financially. It's also lunch keeps you going in the middle of the day. It's the, it's one of the main meals of the day. I find that getting free school meals can be pretty complicated. It depends on how much your parents earn, how much financial support you get from the government, and it also depends on where you live. In Scotland, all primary schools give most of their pupils free lunches, and Wales is about to follow, but not in Northern Ireland or England. And for those of you in secondary school, your parents have to be on benefits and earning a very low wage of £7,400 a year to qualify for a free school meal. Children's charities say this is unfair and claim there are 800,000 children in need of free school meals who just don't get them. Have you thought about secondary school pupils? I mean, do you think there's enough access for kids above the age of 11? Uh, no. At the moment, in secondary schools, it's the case there are children between 11 and 18 who are going hungry. Going hungry, why? Because they're not eligible for free school meals. So what I want the government to do is to provide free school meals for all children in primary schools and secondary schools. And what I want the government to do is say, look, if the mayor can do it in London, we should be able to do it as well. Check this out. 
It's said to be a kind of sea slug spotted on the west coast of Australia called the Spanish Dancer. Its bright orange and red colours are meant to scare away potential predators. But is it a real sea slug or just fake news? We've been investigating. Find out later. It was World Book Day recently, a day to celebrate books, reading, and of course, dressing up as your favourite fictional characters. So we went to Penwortham Primary School in South London to hear from pupils and FYI News Club there about why they love reading. I love reading because it can take me to a different place and I can just really experience what the characters are feeling. What about you? You can just dive into your book and escape reality. And also, I love how it's about things like in real life. Like adventure books, like they can like increase your knowledge and ideas and like every book has a meaning. For example, this book has 25 happy poems to like cheer you up. I like strong girl characters because in books like main characters are girls that are like really strong and brave. I like that there's always a twist at the end and some books have humour. What about you? It depends on what type of book it is, because if it's a non-fiction book, I like learning the facts. Well, I think it's good to read books. It's because it increases your well-being and it takes you to a different world. It creates a picture in my head about what's happened, even if the book doesn't have any pictures. It's better to not have pictures so you can imagine it in your own world. I like reading because it stretches your vocabulary. It just calms me down and it's just fun. Football fans threw thousands of cuddly toys and teddy bears onto the pitch during a match in Istanbul for children affected by Turkey and Syrian earthquakes. The players clapped and were emotional as they rushed to collect the sea of soft toys, which will be shipped to those in need. Well, another book character you might know is the doodle-loving Tom Gates, and we're joined now by his creator, illustrator and author Liz Pichon. Well, Liz, thank you so much for joining us. So, who is Tom Gates and what are the books all about? So, I wrote Tom um, 11 years ago was the first wow. book came out, and he's really based on me, of what I was like as a kid. I write about all the small details of his life, like his school life, friends, pets, and he's very keen on drawing and doodling as well. School is great. I love llamas. <laughs> <laughs> I write about lots of things that happened in my own life and I think some of those things children all over the world you know yeah. can relate to them like you know having a grumpy teenage sister <laughs> and that kind of thing yeah. she's the best at being grumpy oh. So how did you come up with the idea? So I used to illustrate other people's books and nobody was giving me funny books to illustrate <laughs> and I used to do lots of drawings and I started drawing this character and it just looked like a tom I guess it is really important if you have an idea, it's really important to just go for it. Right? You're absolutely right, yeah. I mean, I'd never written a book for older children before. I used to write picture books, and now I'm writing book 21. Wow. And also, I was dyslexic as well, so I never thought in a million years that I would ever end up writing books for children. So just keep at it. You've got to find the right thing to do. Well, that's amazing, because it shows everyone that even if you have dyslexia, it doesn't matter, you can still do whatever you want, <laughs> write books. Well, these illustrations look amazing. Yeah, they really do. Are they really hard to do? They're not. Honestly, it's the simplest illustration mm -hmm. style. I'm going to show you how to draw a monster, which is a character from the book. One of the things I always say, don't worry about making a mistake. Yeah. This style of drawing, anybody can do. I'm going to start in the middle of the page. Yeah. So just draw a straight line down, and we're going to draw a book. This is the book spine, so you need to do like a little rectangle. Oh and then do exactly the same thing on the other side. And I'm just drawing a few extra lines there so it makes it look like there's a little, so it's drawing a book. And then we're gonna draw the monster. And we're gonna draw a line down. Yeah. Then it's almost like you're drawing an M at the top there. And then one across and do the same one at the top there. So let's do his feet. And I say feet, they're kind of just made up. <laughs> it's like two little hands there. So it's holding the book. Draw one big eye and then one small eye, and what I call a letterbox mouth, which is just like a letterbox, I'm going to draw some teeth. You want to do the, the dots of the eyes down, like that, so it looks like it's reading the book. OK. I How are you getting I'm, on, then? Yeah, I Done? think I'm finished. OK, ready, one, two, three. Here are our monster doodles. <laughs> Well, I think I might have to keep practising, but, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank oh, it's you. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, it's been really fun. Thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up, 
a report from two scouts who were mad about space. So did you think this strange sea slug was fake or fact? Well, it's actually fact. This sea slug was spotted on the west coast of Australia and is known as the Spanish Dancer because it looks like a flamenco dancer's skirt in motion. It's also been nicknamed the Pizza of the Sea, although I wouldn't recommend eating it. Check out our webpage for more details on how to spot if something is fake or fact. Hi, I'm Craig. Hi, I'm Simon. We're scouts and we're here in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and we're gonna watch rocket blasts off. Awesome. awesome. When we heard that astronaut Tim Peake will be running a competition with the scouts and seeing a rocket blast off is the prize, we got straight to work. We had to come up with ideas for what a satellite could be used for in the future. Satellites are machines that orbit around Earth and could be used to transmit phone or TV signals, take photos of space or Earth, monitor weather patterns or carry out experiments. But to get them there, you need one of these. This isn't just any rocket, it's a SpaceX rocket. It's the kind that Elon Musk and his team invented, the world's first reusable rocket that blasts off into space and returns to Earth to be used again. The rocket will be taking an Inmarsat satellite, then the I-6F2, into space. There's a lifespan of over 15 years, so there are a lot of different ways it can be used throughout its time in space. My invention was to have a range of satellites in orbit and they would communicate together to quickly store and process data from around the world. At the moment, data fields on Earth produce a lot of heat, and that heat then pollutes the environment. My idea was to come up with a cheap and eco-friendly source of energy by collecting energy from the sun using solar panels on the satellite and then beaming that down to Earth, and that can be cheap and eco-friendly. I'm most excited for the launch this evening. I think it's going to be incredible. I'm also really looking forward to the launch this evening. I think it's going to be really, really nice and <laughs> loud and something you've never seen before. Five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off of Falcon 9 and Inmarsat. Go Falcon, go Inmarsat. That was an incredible, an amazing launch. Maybe one day my stuff will go up in space. That would be incredible. If you have a story and want to report on FYI, get in touch via our webpage. Or even better, get your teacher to set up an FYI news club at your school. Members get the chance to report for us. We'll even help you film your own story. You can watch and discuss the latest episodes with free resources every week. A group of young climate activists from Austria are taking their government to court because they believe they're not doing enough to tackle climate change. They'll argue in court that Austria's climate law doesn't do enough to protect them from potentially life-threatening consequences of global warming. The Austrian legal action is based on a similar case that happened in Germany, where nine young climate activists successfully forced Germany's climate law to be changed with clear targets to reduce emissions of gases that lead to global warming by 2030. There have been other successful cases in the Netherlands and Colombia, and across the world, young people are trying to get their governments to listen and to take action. Remember him? Thor the Walrus has finally finished his UK tour and has landed in Iceland. He's massive, isn't he? Thor drew crowds a few months ago when he was first spotted in Hampshire before spending New Year in Scarborough and then traveling a further 70 miles north to Blythe in Northumberland. He has now been seen a further 850 miles north on the east coast of Iceland. He has previously visited the Netherlands and France, and he is thought to have originally travelled all the way from the Canadian Arctic. Well, Thor isn't the only Arctic wonder that's been spotted in the UK. In a very rare display, the Northern Lights have been seen as far south as Kent and Cornwall recently. So according to my research, they are caused by the sun, which sends out a stream of electrically charged particles called solar flares. They are attracted to the north and south poles by magnetic fields found there. They mix with gases in the atmosphere, causing the gases to glow. We can often see them in Scotland, but they're rarely seen in southern England. We'll leave you with very rare footage of the incredible northern lights in the skies across the UK. Bye!
Bye.